Hello, back again. Um, today um, I want to think about something with those LEDs because I've got one left uh, from the last project, one of those uh, 50 watt, uh, 220 volt uh, cop driverless LEDs. Well, those have a driver, this is actually the driver. And I was thinking about how could I get the heatsink smaller? In the last project, the heatsink had dual purpose. It was a structure and it was it was a heatsink. So, but I was thinking about how to get single LED modules. And I was thinking about taking just a module, uh, like one LED, and then just having a, a, copper, a copper plate beneath it and then maybe some type of 3D printed bracket thingy where the water can um, push through maybe with some turbulence guides inside so that we have water flowing through here and cooling the lead but then I got online uh, searching for copper and the problem then was that I needed the cutter, uh, copper cut into small enough pieces and I won't find a service that cuts copper below 50 uh, x 50 uh, millimeters so that got me thinking again I could cut the copper myself or I could just use the heatsink that it's on here why don't I just print the 3d parts where this LED fits right in and that guides the water exactly over this space here I mean I, I don't even need that, that plate. I, I can use the, uh, the LED as an interface for the heat to the air and then I d would not even need a thermal compound. All I would need is a proxy to glue the LED on the edges in. And yeah, so I will try to, to build an ABS uh, 3D printed heatsink adapter for single pieces of those. Not sure how I will, done this, will do this, but I think I will well build a tray where this fits and I think at this point I usually just uh, place the time lapse of the design process. So we're back. <clears throat> uh, the three, uh, the three, three D uh, test print is uh, ready. Uh, I can try to show you how it works. We have a water input and water output, and in between there's this chamber. Uh, I can take the LED and just push it inside here, and then glue it in place with a proxy. And then the bottom of the LED should be in direct contact with the cooling water. And <clears throat> we'll see if this works. Uh, I mean, this is a quick and dirty prototype right here. Um, but I'm willing to sacrifice this LED for some tests with it. Because I think the wall thickness on this is too thin. Too thin, it uh, uh, could leak through the layers because it's too thin but I'm not sure we're gonna try it out also next generation will probably have some more stuff in it like uh, places for the sensors uh, for, for temperature and and the handle for clamping it onto a rail or bar to mount multiple of them but this again is just a very very first test so 
we're gonna do it. So now I'm gonna pre-solder this LED. Actually, I think I'm gonna uh, place the connections on there before gluing it in. So uh, the first thing we're gonna do is uh, I would I wanted to say we we're gonna place a little blob with the heat gun, but the heat gun isn't warm enough yet, so we wait. So we're gonna put a little blob down here just to secure the whole thing. Uh, we're gonna remove that blob later. So, get it to solidify, then we get our 5 minutes a proxy, and we do what we usually do with it, um, gluing stuff together. So now we're gonna try it out. I've already connected it to uh, a water bucket, uh, a pump and the electricity. Uh, now we're gonna turn it off, uh, turn it on and see if it leaks and works. Well, that looks quite good to me. I mean, it doesn't seem to leak. It's shiny and it just works. I'm gonna let this run for a while and yeah then see if our little experiment actually made something useful. <laughs> 